So I want to make a quick video tonight to talk about something that uh, you may or may not have used uh, if you've been doing any web development, and that's called the Mutation Observer. Mutation Observer, uh, for me, a couple of years ago was a lifesaver because I was using a uh, framework uh, in a web view that I had no control over. And one of the things this framework was doing was it was actually injecting uh, new elements uh, into the web content. And uh, in some cases, they were uh, it was content that was not allowed by the application. And so uh, after talking to uh, an Apple engineer, believe it or not, um, uh, one of the things they suggested was that I take a look at the web APIs to see if uh, there's something in the web APIs that I could use to uh, observe what was happening inside of the uh, inside of the the web view. And so uh, I wound up uh, using the Mutation Observer. And the Mutation Observer, uh, like I said before, was a lifesaver because what it lets you do is you can essentially you can point to any element inside of your web page as an example. And you can listen to any changes that are made. So if an attribute changes on a node, if somebody's adding an element in there, you can also observe that and make changes. And so uh, what I want to do right now is show you an example of how you can actually use this in one of your web applications. So what I've done right here is I've created a very simple web page. And in this web page, uh, I have this section here. And what I'm going to do is when this web page goes to run, it's going to actually add a new element here. Uh, what we're doing is we're creating a, uh, a div element. And in that div element, uh, I'm going to give it a class name of div underscore element, and I'll put some content in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to this uh, the section I have uh, with ID of div section. So if we come up here into my uh, HTML, we can see we have this element here called div section. So what will happen is it's going to add that element in there. But there may be something I want to do with that. Like maybe I want to have like a mouse over event on any elements that exist in there. So if we have a framework or something like that was adding an element in there and we want to be able to, let's say, make changes to that or maybe even remove that element, uh, we can do that using the mutation observer. So let me show you how that's going to work. So if we come right up here, uh, what I've done is I'm using the document query selector to actually select this uh, this document or basically this uh, node right here. And then what I'm doing is I'm declaring a new mutation observer. And so you can see the way this works here is that I just call this mutation observer and then I do a new on it and I pass in to its init, uh, into its constructor here, uh, a function with two parameters. One of those parameters is going to be uh, the mutation list that gets passed in by the mutation observer when we call the observe uh, function on it. And then the other thing we'll do is actually we'll pass a reference to the observer in there as well. And so inside of here, what I'm doing is I'm just checking for any mutations uh, inside of this mutation list. And then in this case, if it's a type of child list, what's going to do here is I'm going to grab any nodes that are added. And then for each node that's in here, I want to be able to do this something. So let's just to see what this looks like right now. I'm just going to do a console.log. And I'm going to pass the node in there so we can see what happens here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to come over here and launch my web server. My web server is running. Now I'm going to come over to this page. This is the actual page. I'm going to reload it here so we can see what happens here. Okay, so we can see that what happened here is that uh, uh, it, this node here did get added in here into my div section. So if I come over here and I expand this, I can see here in my section, boom, there's this uh, div element that I created with, uh, with the JavaScript code. So what I want to be able to do now is uh, I want to set this up so that if I come over here and I mouse over this content, that it gives me a, a message. I'm just, I want to console log that or something. So what I've done is down here, I've created a function here called event, uh, event mouse over. And what this is going to do is every time this function gets fired off, it's going to just console log this element was just moused over. So to make that work, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace this uh, console.log here 
Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's do this. I'm just going to type it out. So I'm going to say node dot add event listener. And what I'm going to do is I want to do this for the mouse over event. And then once I've done that, I want to use this mouse over event right here. This is going to be the handler here. All right. So let's save that. I'm going to come back to the web page here. I'm going to reload this. All right. So now we see we have this uh, web content here. Now if I take my mouse and a mouse over that, boom, we can see that this element was just moused over. So that is essentially how the mutation observer works. So if you've seen this, uh, you like this, you like to see more content like this, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, you can give it a thumbs down, but please go to thumbs up anyways. And uh, also subscribe to this channel. It helps with the YouTube uh, algorithm. Uh, the more people I get subscribing to this channel, the more people get to see these videos, the more people it helps. So please subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions or anything in the comments, please leave a comment for this. Uh, and good luck. And thank you for watching the Polygot uh, Engineer channel.